Hi, this is Scott Shepard um, of Scott Shepard Photography, Watertown, South Dakota, and this is a short tutorial that talks a little bit about uh, various backup strategies that you might have uh, with respect to aperture. And uh, among other things, I'm going to talk about how to create aperture vaults. Um, I have a library, an aperture library called um, 2013 to 22 Focus Stacking. And I want to make sure that I have copies of this. And in my workflow, um, backup is extremely important, uh, partly because uh, these files exist primarily on hard drives, and uh, hard drives can go bad, or we can accidentally erase things. And so my workflow depends on a backup strategy that in some cases has multiple copies existing in different places for the files that are really important to me. Um, there is, the, of course, the simple and old-fashioned way of backing something up. I could just uh, burn this to a disk. And in this particular case, because it's a fairly small library, I could do that. Uh, the problem that I have is that some of my aperture libraries, like the one for last year, uh, with 18,000 photos, had something like 320 gigabytes. Uh, there's no way that I could burn that to one disk. I could burn it to a bunch of disks but uh, that's a little bit awkward and it is, I must say, a little bit 20th century. So let's talk about some um, strategies here. And by the way, I'm going to show you what this looks like in Aperture. Uh, uh, strategy number one is uh, a seamless strategy and it's called the time machine. And uh, if you've got your time machine set up right, um, it will automatically back things up without you having to think about it. So that if this library were in a place where my time machine was backing uh, stuff up, it would get backed up automatically. Now again, the problem that I have is that I have a lot of gigabytes of uh, aperture libraries and um, my time machine disk right now is a three terabyte machine and not all of those libraries will exist on that. Uh, but this is really the easiest way to back up. Uh, another easy way to back up is to have um, your files in a folder where they get backed up to some kind of online backup service. For example, um, I have this particular library in, a, in my Dropbox, and uh, dropbox.com for me is a, an essential tool. And you'll notice that this library exists on um, Dropbox. And if there are any changes made to it, it's automatically updated. Now, it doesn't look like a regular library here, but that's just the way that Dropbox um, does it. So Dropbox is one way to do it. Again, you have size limitations. I have a paid account, but I still have something like 140 gigabytes total at my disposal. So I don't back up all of my Aperture libraries um, through Dropbox. The tool that I use is a tool called um, Vaults, and this is something that's unique to Aperture. And way down at the bottom left, if you look, there is a button uh, in the library um, mode or view of your Aperture library and it's called Show Vaults. And you'll notice that when I click on that, nothing shows up. This little gear icon down here called Vault Actions allows me to add a vault. And I like to call my vaults exactly what the library name is. So this is going to be 2013-02-22 Focus Stacking. And then it asks you for a place to save it. Now, in my case, I have a hard drive uh, that I keep. And now, I, the reason I put this on an external hard drive and not on the drive of my computer is that, of course, if the drive in my computer fails, uh, I would lose the backup as well. And this is a hard drive that I will keep in another room uh, and maybe even off-site uh, so that it's protected against the odd chance that our house might catch on fire. So I'm going to add this vault to this hard drive. And now if you look over in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see the name of the vault, 
um, how much space is on the drive that you're going to share it on and a progress bar down uh, across the <laughs> length or across the width of the uh, dialogue here. And then what I'm going to do to back this up is I'm just going to click the uh, little red um, recycle button and it goes to work preparing uh, and updating the vault. Um, the one thing that is valuable about the Aperture Vault is it will compare the pre-existing vault to the um, files that are in the current library and so that it will do an incremental backup uh, for you uh, and it's a pretty swift thing. Actually that um, backup didn't take so long because it was a fairly small file. Now let's go and take a look at the hard drive just so you can see what an Aperture Vault looks like. And that's the icon right there, an Aperture Vault. Now the other thing that the Aperture Vault will do is it will can compress things just a little bit. Now again, what's cool about this is that if I make uh, changes to this library, if I add to it and so on, when I go back and click the backup button, or if there are things that need to be changed, the backup button will indicate that it's uh, time to back up. The drawback of this particular process is that I have to uh, remember to back things up. There's nothing inherent in this process that will automatically do it for me. What I do is that I set a reminder in iCal and depending on the importance of the particular library I might get a reminder once a week or once a day or once every three days or whatever you want to do that says that it's time to back up. Anyway, those are three backup strategies. Uh, in the case of this particular library, it exists in three different places. It exists on this computer, it exists in Dropbox, and it also exists now as an Aperture Vault on an external hard drive, which I will keep away from the room that this computer is in. Hope this helps. Thanks for listening.